Today we have with us Fahim Khan from the Dawn Group in Pakistan. Fahim, good to have you with us. Thank you, Prabhupada. Good to be with you. There is a feeling that Pakistan is heading towards a failed state, that it lacks legitimacy, its state apparatus isn't functioning. Recent events, particularly after Abbottabad and various other incidents that have happened, seems to confirm to a lot of people that this is the trajectory Pakistan seems to be following. What is your take on this? Because I don't think Pakistan's state is really that weak. I really don't uh, understand this uh, political science mumbo-jumbo about failed state and otherwise. Yes, in my living memory for the last 25-30 years, okay, I, what I have noticed is that the state of people of Pakistan is constantly going from bad to worse. And we are not improving. We have we've been hit by one crisis after the other, one problem after the other. Especially since Ziaullah days, we we really been you know a, a, I mean I, I, as I should say in a bad jam. Okay. Um, now today, uh, I mean previously the Pakistani establishment, meaning the Pakistani military and the civil military bureaucracy and some of the few rules that they used to accommodate as you know some kind of some form of political government all that is coming to a knot uh, the, the 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 pakistani military establishment or this as you know we when uh, cautiously we we use the word security establishment is essentially uh, used to have one good ally our uh, masters of Pakistan, the U.S. of A. Today, it appears that the priority of U.S. of A has changed. Now, the Pakistani security establishment always had its own, um, uh, uh, how should I say, its own agenda, its own Western interest. Once in clash with uh, the the uh, the American. Uh, interest in this region, whether it be Afghanistan, whether it be Iran, whether it be India, whether it be even China, okay, Pakistani security establishment is coming under increasing pressure. Now, suddenly, they're becoming democratic. They're even approaching the parliament. I mean, there's something that they never, I mean, no parliament could have ever, you know, asked the the, the, the DGISI or the, or the chief of uh, Pakistani military to come and uh, sort of report to the parliament and pass. Uh, when they are coming from all uh, pressure from all sides uh, and they find themselves, uh, you know, uh, increasingly um, uh, isolated, they want to go back to people of Pakistan. Now, people of Pakistan are li literally having a good laugh. What problems do we see for Pakistan? Pakistan is a economically viable state, it's a politically viable state, it's a geographically contiguous and a viable state. So why shouldn't it work? It needs to put it priority right. The, the security establishment is in a state of crisis and particularly after the Abbottabad incident where it is now almost clear that uh, Pakistan was either the Pakistani security establishment either failed in its uh, efforts to know where bin Laden was or connived with it and also allowed the Pakistan, the Americans to come in and do an operation in their airspace. All this seems to have put the security establishment on the back foot. Do you think this is good and this will continue or do you think it's a temporary issue and the security establishment will again come out on top as it has in Pakistan earlier? To be honest, for people of Pakistan, this is very good. Okay, our security establishment coming under pressure from all sides, you know, forces them to come and, you know, put some kind of a uh, civil democratic, you know, um, uh, face uh, there to, to believe that the Pakistani security establishment is suddenly very weak and uh, or it's uh, in, a, in a complete state of disarray. That's not correct. What they are trying to do is they are trying to renegotiate their equation with the Americans. Once they are able to do so, okay, then they, they will be all powerful and almighty again. The, the problem is that, I mean, the way we look at, I mean, the way people of Pakistan look at, is that Americans' agenda has drastically changed. They, their uh, priorities have changed. So this time around, 
the very notion that the Pakistani security establishment thrives at, meaning um, it's, it's, the, its hostilities towards India, its hostilities towards Afghanistan, or even, so to, so to speak, towards Iran. Now, Americans are not going to reconcile, at least in the near future, with those uh, um, uh, uh, priorities of the Pakistani security establishment. So we really don't see a quick fix between the Pakistani security establishment and the American uh, establishment. Basically, you believe that the security establishment of Pakistan and the United States, the conflict or the contradiction between the two is real. And it's not going to be easy to fix this. But don't you think that the Americans really need the Pakistanis to get out of Afghanistan, which is really their short-term, if not medium-term agenda? And therefore, while the conflict or the contradiction may stay, the larger issue is really if the Americans have to get their tail out of Afghanistan, they need Pakistani help. And that's why Pakistan really, in the long run, has a much more influence over the United States than vice versa. The, the thing is... Uh Americans wants to get out of Afghanistan, okay? Uh, Americans have tons and tons of money. Af Af Afghanistan is a tribal society, okay? Once Americans get out of um, uh, Afghanistan, there'll be a million f infights in Afghanistan, you know, taking place right away, okay? As soon as you remove the Americans or the NATO or the Western forces, do you think the Afghans are going to reconcile amongst themselves very easily? I mean, it's, uh, as soon as they start fighting amongst themselves, okay, so it serves the Pakistani security establishment interest. Americans, I think, okay, the the change, the, the strategic change um, in American interest in this region is has more to do with India than the Afghanistan. Um, um, uh, the uh, the Al Qaeda or uh, the um, uh, the Taliban, Taliban will not really pose. In, in the long term, if you go to the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and you talk to the, 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 the elite, the, the intellectuals, the journalists there, they'll tell you that Taliban are really not interested in a long term fight with Americans. They just want their pound of flesh, you know, they want Americans out. Okay? Now, that is not a big deal for Americans. So, for um, Americans, to use Pakistan security establishment as the local watchdog or, you know, I mean, they, 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 the leash is going to become shorter by the day. The, the, um, the need, the American need for the Pakistan security establishment of 1980s and 90s is not the same today. Now, they said that, why should um, um, uh, uh, Americans try to strengthen the Pakistani security establishment when they have larger strategic interests with India or so to speak they, they would rather have some kind of accommodation in this region. Now Pakistani security establishment has one powerful tool okay that they have been tantalizing people of Pakistan with and that is Islam and hostility towards India okay. Americans in the long term will not want that. Chinese in long term will not want that. Now, if you take that away from the Pakistani security establishment, what is it left with? Okay, increasingly, Pakistani economy is in in in, in dire states. Pa it's it's uh, Pakistani economy is unable to support Pakistan. So, uh, increasingly, Pakistani security establishment is come to, is going to come under pressure, and it will continue to come under pressure. That's a very good point that you make. Uh, I think that's a very interesting issue. That with particularly with the recent killing of Shahzad, the Asia uh, Times online uh, editor, the what we saw in a video in which the Pakistani ranger shot down in broad daylight, a Pakistani, uh, maybe a local thug, but whatever it is, he was shot down in cold blood. All this seems to show that the Pakistani establishment is really coming under some kind of public pressure. Do you think this is, in the long run, this will lead to a change of equation between the Pakistani people and the Pakistani security establishment? Or do you think after some time, once the furor dies down, it will be business as usual? No, I, I think that change is already taking place. Okay, What you see in form of Salim Shahzad, and you know Salim was a very... A uh, dear friend of mine was like a kid brother to me. Been working for Don Group from 1994 to 2007. I knew him inside out. Okay, now Salim was uh, was a very brave journalist. Okay, 
he was constantly under pressure from intelligence agencies and not only intelligence agencies but also Al Qaeda in Taliban. He was kidnapped and even arrested by Taliban's in Halman, even though he was sort of given safe passage, you know, directed to Halman there. You know, all said, said and done. Similarly, you talk about the Safar Shah, the boy who was, you know, killed in bright daylight in a Karachi park. Now, if you have seen the video on YouTube or on Pakistani channels, the, you know, the, the most interesting part is, even after those rangers, or what supposedly you know, the, the uh, border security force, they shot this 19-year-old this thrice, there was no remorse, there was no, you know, on their faces. It was business as usual. So it wasn't something which was done by six jawans on ground. It, it came down all the way from the top. Okay, that has been the, our business in this country. Okay, um, you know, they, I mean, if you talk to the to security establishment, they say because our criminal justice system is so weak, we cannot really get indictments from the courts. So it's better to eliminate the um, uh, crim uh, such criminal element. Now that thing is changing because by advent of media, free, free media and press in Pakistan, security establishment, intelligence agencies, they are coming increasingly under pressure. Equation is changing, okay? There was a time where there was free flow of money in the name of Afghan war from the United States to Pakistan. And Pakistani security establishment, Pakistani journals, they were having, you know, great time. Now that flow of money is not there. This is increasing checks by the parliament's audit committee. The old habits die, you know, not, they don't die easy, okay? These things will continue to happen. They will continue to come under pressure. People of Pakistan has never seen a security establishment as villains the way they see it today. If nobody is there to give them a shoulder, okay? Nobody is there to give, to walk them to their grave, okay? Everybody says, you did it, please go and find your own. Security establishment is also the one which fostered fundamentalist forces in the belief that strategically it would help them strike against India. Do you think this alliance is also coming under pressure or do you think this part of the alliance between fundamentalists and the security establishment will continue in their effort to seek greater legitimacy for themselves? I think this is a predicament for, you know, people like me, I'm, you know, liberal, progressive lot in this country. The reason I say that, because there is a genuine struggle. There is a genuine battle, if not a war, going to, on or taking place right now between the rightist fundamental, fundamentalist element that our security establishment created and the security establishment itself. There is a very, very genuine thing. The Jawans are getting killed. The brigadiers and colonels are getting killed. The generals, I mean, it's amazing, you know, finding themselves under pressure, under threat, okay? There is a general tussle battle going on, okay? Now, uh, I mean, the, the Pakistani security establishment consider with these elements also as their strategic assets. Okay, they think once the Americans move out, once the American interest dies out, okay, then they, I mean, their their enemy, their contradiction will only be with India, and that is the time they'll need them. Okay, this is where this is the battle or this is the war that they had trained or developed or generated the, this these security assets. So they don't want to surrender these assets in a hurry either. So they're looking for the good fund or the bad fund. Or they're trying to, you know, create that wedge or, you know, they're trying to look for that divide between. Now, we keep telling them there is no such thing as good fund or the bad fund. Either it's your fund or you're not a fund. Okay. It's very difficult for them to understand. Okay. Now, people, the, the reason I said that the problem with people like us is now we see them fight a real battle with these hardcore right-wing uh, militant uh, element, okay? 
Now, should we continue to demolish the security establishment that we have been trying to do for the last six, three years? And, you know, not really successful. But this time we have an opening. So if you attack them, okay, they come under more pressure. Or if we, you support them against their um, battle vis-a-vis um, -vis the, um, the, the, the Taliban, vis-a-vis -vis the, the bad funders, etc., etc. Okay? Times have changed. They, I am sure for one thing, the, even the Pakistani security establishment that I have always considered completely insane, even they may not be insane enough to realize that this monster that they created has come back to bite them.